Are you ready to try your hand at placing your very first stock trade? Then check out our free guide, 10 Steps to Choosing Your First Stock to Trade, The Ultimate Beginner's Guide. In this free download, you'll learn how to choose the right kinds of stocks and how to find them, know when to buy your stocks and when to sell them, and you'll learn how to take your very first steps to becoming a stock trader and much more. Grab your free guide now by going to tradeway.com slash guide. That's tradeway.com slash guide. Hey guys, I'm David Mitchell, founder and CEO of Tradeway. What if God himself gave you a blueprint for how to handle your money? Well, the Bible is a practical book. Let's dive in and see what it has to say about wealth, about risk, about leverage, and about investing, and uncover how trading in the stock market can be a powerful tool for moving towards your biggest goals. We're so happy you're here. This is The Word on Investing. Hey guys, welcome back to the podcast. Hey, we've been in Ecclesiastes chapter five and we've been talking about dreaming and how important a dream is or a vision for an entrepreneur. And we got to like the fifth point was that when you finally do reach your dream and you become wealthy, then you better understand how money works and how to deal with money or that money will destroy you. Remember, we talked about that a little bit last time. If you didn't catch it, go back and listen to it. But the money can actually hurt us if we think we're loving it, right? We're we're supposed to think of it as a tool and then it won't hurt us. So there were a few points we made last time on that and I'll pick it up where we left off. The first one was the first thing we need to know about money is that loving it will cause it to hurt us. The second thing Ecclesiastes taught us is that the more we make, the more we'll spend and we'll never create wealth because we just use it up unless we learn how to handle it. We talked about that last time also. And so today we'll talk about the third thing right here in this little passage. And uh, I find it in verse 13. It says, there is a sore evil which I have seen under the sun, namely riches kept for the owners thereof to their hurt. But those riches perish by evil travail, and he begetteth a son, and there is nothing in his hand. Okay, now to me, this verse talks about two problems. I mean, one we've alluded to already. So that first part where it says riches kept by the owners thereof to their hurt, like that seems to me a person who loves the money because they're hoarding it, right? They're like the man in the New Testament that made a bunch of a huge crop and stuck it in the barn and then he died that night. And Jesus made the point, well, whose is it now, right? So don't hoard the money. Don't love it. You need to use it as a tool. And we've already discussed that, but look at this little part here. What do you think this means? But those riches perish by evil travail. Now, that word in Hebrew can mean work. So you're talking about making money through evil work. In other words, dirty money, bad money. So you're doing things that hurt people to make money for yourself. That isn't going to work out well for you either. And what's going to happen is if you love money so much that you hoard it and you're making your money through maybe selling things to people that hurt those people, could I use cigarettes as an example? Maybe, you know, what What if you make your money by selling something that gives people lung cancer? Is that going to turn out well for your family? Well, not in the end, it won't. And so what this actually says is if you hoard the money, you love the money, it will hurt you. If you use evil methods of work to make the money, it will hurt you. And then it goes even further. And it says, and he begetteth the son and there is nothing in his hand. You know what that says? that if you mismanage riches or you make the riches inappropriately in God's eyes, then there will be none left for your children. It will just be spent unwisely. It will be gone, and the next generation will find itself in poverty. Well, I think that's important for us to realize that, don't you? Now, here's another point. The greatest truth to keep us from loving money and hoarding it is to realize that we cannot take it with us. We should set our affections on things above, not on things that are on the earth. And we continue in Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 15, and look what it says. As he came forth of his mother's womb, naked shall he return to go as he came. And he shall take nothing of his labor, which he may carry away in his hand. So like when we die, we don't take anything with us. You've heard that a million times. Guess where it came from? 
Ecclesiastes chapter 5, verse 15. It's in the context of all this that we've been talking about. So when we do have a dream and we handle that properly and we work towards it and we create wealth, we need to know how to deal with the money biblically. We can't love the money. We don't hoard the money. We don't make the money by hurting other people. We make it by helping other people, benefiting other people. And uh, so those are the things we need to understand. And the last thing in verse 15, guess what? You can't take it with you when you die. So why not let the Lord use it through you to his means in this world and use that money as a tool? Colossians 3, 1 says, If ye then be risen with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. Now, if you go out to a Tradeway event anywhere in the country or even an online event, um, you're going to find a lot of scripture in our stock trading material because we believe that a Bible-based business, especially creating a family business where each generation teaches skills to the kids and the grandkids. And you don't just send your kids off to college to learn to do something no one in the family's ever done, but you teach them to do what your family's done for several generations. We believe this is God's teaching on the right way to have potential to create generational wealth. You know, that is so important. And I think when you get out there to a Tradeway event, you're probably going to be like a lot of people that send me emails and say, you know what? I like the stock market stuff, but I come for the rabbit trails. What they mean by that is the Bible stuff. So, you know, this passage is so important because it's God's methods for how to deal with money. Realize that when we labor, we labor for the wind, but when we invest and let our money make the money, we create time freedom, which creates time for worshiping God more, for studying the Bible more, for spending time with our kids, our grandkids, our spouse. And we must realize that when we labor for money, we're laboring for something that cannot last for eternity. It is like working and being paid the wind. In verse 16 in Ecclesiastes 5 says this, And this also is a sore evil, that in all points as he came, so shall he go. And what profit hath he that hath labored for the wind? So we need to take the money that God does bless us with and use it as a tool to accomplish things in his kingdom on this earth. And then we have treasures in heaven and those last forever. So the miserly, wicked, rich man who is covetous cannot take his money with him when he dies. He should have used it to help his family and to help others. He should have taken some risk and invested it and let his money make money so that he had more time freedom to get to know God better, right? And it is of no use to him in eternity if he's evil and spends it that way. Also, the second half of verse 16 indicates that laboring for money, in other words, trading our time for other people's money, that's spelled J-O-B, right? Not the book of Job, but Job. And so it eats up our time, which is actually way more valuable than the money that we're getting paid. And that's why it is so important to go out to Tradeway.com and let us teach you the skill sets for trading and investing so that you can let your money make the money rather than trading your time for dollars. Listen, we don't, if, if you grow up in this country and you go to college, you get a job, I don't care how high that job is. I mean, you would not believe the number of engineers doctors, attorneys that come to our Tradeway events because they know that they're trading their time for money, even though it's a greater amount of money per hour. They cannot create wealth that way. They need to learn to let the money make the money, and that's what we're teaching, correct? And so, you know, when you when you learn that fact, then you understand that there is no amount of money anybody could pay you that is worth your time. Your time is infinitely valuable. And the money they pay you is not. So we need to get the money making the money so we can use our time doing the things God put you here to do for other people. And that's kind of the theme here in Ecclesiastes. Therefore, we must learn to let our money make money. This is what cash flow trading on Wall Street is all about. And it's kind of been the theme of Tradeway since we started. The person who trades his time for money and does not know how to create wealth and manage it and use the money as a tool But in fact, he loves the money. Maybe he loves it so much he's afraid to take risk, which means he'll never invest it. 
because he's afraid to, that person will gain nothing on this earth but darkness, sorrow, wrath, and sickness. That's what verse 17 here says. All his days also he eateth in darkness, and he hath much sorrow and wrath with his sickness. So that, you know, that's a person who is evil and makes his money through selling things that hurt other people or who just puts his wealth in bigger barns and then dies and can't take it with him. Or it's the person who loves money so much that they will not invest any of it because they don't have skill sets and they're afraid to invest it. And you find that in the parable of the talents if you want to see what God thinks about that person. So any of those types of people are covered in verse 17. And the next point I would make is this. The man who handles wealth properly is not caught up in the things of this world, but his joy is in the Lord. He does not covet money because he already has it. And he sees it as but a tool for good and a gift from God. And we find that in verse 18. It says, Behold that which I have seen, it is good and comely for one to eat and drink and to enjoy the good of all his labor that he taketh under the sun all the days of his life, which God gives him, for it is his portion. Every man also to whom God hath given riches and wealth and hath given him power to eat thereof and to take his portion and to rejoice in his labor. This is the gift of God. And verse 20 says, For he shall not much remember the days of his life, because God answereth him in the joy of his heart. So he doesn't sit around and think about the worldly stuff that he did with his money and the things he bought with his money. He thinks about the things that God accomplished in God's kingdom because God gave him the money as a blessing and and made him to be a good steward and servant of the Lord. And in this verse 20 where it says, because God answers him in the joy of the heart, that Hebrew word for answer, alna is the word, and it means to ravish. So this man will not end life thinking of the things of the world, but of the joy of the Lord because God ravished him with blessings. And that's kind of the context of it. So I'm going to remind you of a verse we talked about last time, Proverbs 10, 22, the blessing of the Lord, it maketh rich, and he addeth no sorrow with it. So we've had this wonderful study out of the Old Testament. Let me end with something that Jesus Christ said to us. In Luke chapter 6, verse 38, he says, Give, and it shall be given unto you. Good measure, pressed down and shaken together and running over. Shall men give into your bosom? For with the same measure that you meet with all, it shall be measured to you again. Now tell me that's not talking about using money as a tool. And that's what Jesus Christ taught. He said, look, uh, don't hoard the money, give, give the money. And then other men are going to bring money back to you. Now that doesn't necessarily mean they're just giving you gifts. What it means is, I mean, one thing is that could happen, but one thing it means is as you create a business that meets the needs of other people, they will pay for that product. They will pay for that service and your family will make a profit and that money will come back to you from other men. And that's how capitalism works. That's how God created it to work. But it's not based on you loving money and hoarding it. It's based on giving and it shall be given unto you, Jesus said. So isn't that fantastic? I mean, you want to talk about profit? You take your money and you put it into a product and you just sell it and you make that money. But even better than that, at Tradeway, you can learn to let your money make the money through trading, creating a stock trading business, teach your children and grandchildren how to work with you in that and have the potential to create generational wealth in the fourth quadrant of the cash flow quadrant, the best quadrant, right? Now you might be thinking, okay, now wait a minute though. If I make money in the stock market, how am I contributing Uh, to other people and benefiting other people? Well, that is a great question, and I get asked that a lot. And I understand the question, because if you don't think it through, you wouldn't know that. In fact, if you don't understand how Wall Street works, you might not know the answer. But here is the answer. When you buy a stock, or you even go into the options market and you buy a call option, for example, that wants to make money when the stock goes up, That money that you put into the Wall Street system creates the very liquidity 
that the entire Wall Street mechanism, including the banking system and everything, uses that liquidity to loan the money to the small businessman that does want to create a factory or to create products that will help people. And they can't even get it started without that money. So you're actually part of creating the liquidity and the capital. That's what capitalism means. You're creating the capital that creates all of these small businesses that employ 80% of all the people in America are employed by small business, not giant, you know, companies. And you're a part of that. So you're, you're actually providing the capital, which is like the bottom of the food chain. It doesn't even start without the capital. And so you play a hugely important role in helping other people. Every church that you've ever seen was built with money that was borrowed. That money came from Wall Street. And every hospital that was built came through capital that was borrowed and every great business, you know, and you can go right down the line. So yes, you're playing a part in helping other people, even when you just buy a call option. So knowing that is really important. You might be playing the most important role because nothing happens without that tool called money. The thing is, Jesus said it comes back to you, the money that you invest to create this product comes back to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together and running over, which means that's the profit. More like the money you put into making it, way more money comes back. It's exponentially more money that comes back than the amount you put in to make the products. That's why people get wealthy. And Don't you think it's funny that Wall Street and all the movies and everything, the wealthy businessman is the evil guy, right? it's like they want you to think it's evil to create wealth. And yet Jesus shows us how to do it right there. So if you do it the right way, it's not evil, is it? It's actually a blessing from God. And he's the one that shows us how to do it. Well, it all starts with a dream and that's where we started out. And I hope you'll remember that. And I hope you guys will have a a great life as you start to practice these biblical principles. And if you love this show, then please rate and review it so other people with similar interests can find it and we can be a help to them. Don't forget to go out to Tradeway.com and look at the skill sets that we teach that give you the potential to learn how to let your money make the money. So it frees up your time so you have more time to spend with the Lord, with your family, and so forth and do the higher things in life. That's what Tradeway is all about, and we'll see you guys next time.